You're on Afternoons. It's Jacinta Parsons filling in for Claire Bowditch for the rest of the week. I had one of those dreams. I think it was last night or the night before. I was about to do this radio show. And when I tried speaking, nothing came out of my mouth. And I looked down and there was nothing written there. Classic, crazy fear dream about public speaking, I guess. Do you have the same fear about this? And have you found ways um, that you've been able to get through it and become a great public speaker? Even though this is something that I do for a job, it still fills me with fear. So we've invited the total expert in the field. She's a life coach and a public speaking expert, and she's got some tips for us to get through our next presentation. Welcome Janelle Johnson, or JJ, as you prefer to be called. Good afternoon to you. Hi, Jacinta. Thanks for having me. Now, look, my let's start here. Hey, My public speaking fear used to be so significant uh, that a year ago, I was in my child's class and we were sitting around in one of those circles where everyone has to speak. I was so nervous about having to talk in front of five-year-olds that I was getting nervous when it was coming up to me. Is it it's common, but why is it so com yeah. common? Yeah, well, it's a, a human natural fear. We all have the fear of not being good enough or not belonging. And so that that fear pops up when you stand out and you're the centre of attention. So will I be good enough? Will people like me? Will I belong? And so everyone has, no one is immune to that fear. Do so you think everybody has it? Absolutely. Everyone has that that natural, we, we can condition ourselves and we can have strategies in regards to empowering ourselves, and that's what I teach, but we all have this fear of not being good enough or not belonging, and that's when that really pops up when we're the centre of attention. Yeah, it really pops up, even if you're in front of five-year-olds, which is weird, isn't it? Because, like, even that... Why would I be so worried about it? It's like almost like I can't control or have a rational perspective around it because they were just asking me what animal I would like to be. <laughs> I was just going to say, I want to be an eagle. It's not a big deal. But the, the anticipation for the time that I was going to speak really uh, freaked me out. Yeah. And it's also the, the ego pops up to want to be right, right? So you get a question, am I, will I pick the right, will I pick the, that right animal to be? Maybe they won't like the animal. It's true. They <laughs> so did like it. Yeah. I was great at it in the <laughs> end. But, it, you know, I think it is all of that stuff. But it, it sits in another part of us, though, doesn't it? It doesn't sit in our rational mind where we can rationalise our way out of it. Yeah. And I think that often when we're, we've got this fear, we're focusing on ourselves. And that's what I really teach people is when you focus on others, you focus on serving your audience, whoever that is. So it's the radio viewers, listeners at the moment, when you're focusing on them, then the nerves dissipate. Because when you're doing nervousness or anxiety about public speaking, you're having this internal dialogue about yourself. So whether I've got the right answer, whether I'll say the right thing, whether people will like me. So it's really about shifting that focus on serving whoever is in your room or, or your audience. Sounds like a nice way to actually yeah. live, maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> it's and like it's, it's truly Zen be, and the yeah. art of speaking. And it's truly being present. And I think in these days, we are so not present. It might be having dinner at, at a dinner table at a restaurant and so many people are on their phones. And so I teach people not, I don't, it's not as though it's logic. I'm saying this is scripted, how you have to do it. But when you experience being completely present to others, and as a speaker, I teach teach that and you serve your audience, it, it's a huge shift and your anxiety just, it goes away. I already feel about better about life. <laughs> We'd love to actually hear from you guys if you've got some uh, thoughts on how you've overcome fear of public speaking or how you know how to do a good job of it. one 300 or 0437 774 One of my tips or things that I did was I thought I've got to deal with this experience in my body around fear. So I took myself to Luna Park. Yeah. I put myself on some scary rides and I tried to change my relationship to that feeling yes. and tell myself that that feeling's a good feeling, not yes. a bad feeling. Because it's very, if you think about excitement yeah. and fear, they're very, very similar That's feelings. It, aren't they? Yes. So it's the way that you're communicating to yourself. You can either disempower yourself as a speaker or channel that that energy and make that that really work for you.
Do you think we all can be taught how to do this or are some people naturally really good at just that communication and connection? Look, I think that everybody... Absolutely everybody can be a great speaker. It's about, firstly, your belief systems about what you can and cannot do. And it's also about having the strategies and techniques that you can, anybody can learn that. And so there are people that have had maybe more practice or, or have have got that uh, personality of, of influence more than others, but anybody can, can also learn how to be a great speaker. It's pretty interesting as you're talking, this sounds like you're dealing with your life at a deep level in some ways if you're facing you know your fear of being accepted and the way that you sort of deal in the world it's kind of bigger in some ways isn't it than just working out how to speak absolutely I always take it back to like you talked about the, the children that you were going to speak with I take it back to that childlike curiosity when you were five years old and Suddenly we're adults and we take ourselves so damn seriously and we Are the stakes this, higher though when yeah, you're an adult? Well, well, I think that well, you could look at it like that. It depends how you look at it. For me, you are tricky. <laughs> Tell me how you look at it. For me, it's about when you, as adults, it's like we hold on to perfection. It's like we, it, it, everything has to, it's all our du ducks have, have to line up for us to feel safe. Because the other thing with human behaviour is that we crave certainty and safety. Yes, we do. And so when we can allow ourselves to embrace un uncertainty and embrace that childlike no, curiosity. I can't, you though. can, you can. How? <laughs> you, well, you're doing it right now, right? True. So, so when, you're, when you're on the air, anything can happen. Callers can ask any type of questions. So, Don't do that, callers. You're yeah. instructed. Do not do that. <laughs> and and I think the ego also comes out for the need to be right. And it's okay to not be right. It's okay to learn from others. Uh, it's you say that, but when uh, don't you think that there are a lot of, and especially in this world that we're in right now, where you know there'll be a text come through saying you are the worst at this <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. There's a, there is a lot of judgment for what yeah. you're doing. We're getting a lot of that feedback come to us all the time. So whilst we say don't worry about it, really, there's there's something legitimate in that fear. Yeah, look, I look at myself 10 years ago and I, I have a huge need to be liked, a huge need. I actually bought a book on it. <laughs> How can I be liked more? Was that the book? <laughs> I think it was the Disease to Please. That's oh, what right. it was called. And I thought you were trying to find out how people could like you more. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good book. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, yeah, and I don't think it's a bad thing not to be liked because then you, you actually become good at being liked because you work hard at it. But at the same time, I've got this, this mindset around, because sometimes people say, I don't care what anyone thinks. Well, I actually do care what people think, but I'm the master of my mind. So I can decide what feedback I can take on board or not. And so sometimes... As humans, we want to reject some feedback that maybe can serve us, but it's hard to hear. And I really want to try stuff on like that as well. But if it's not going to serve me going forward, then I send the person away and that feedback away with love. Okay, I might send some feedback away with love yeah. as we go. I was speaking to JJ and we're talking this afternoon about the art of public speaking. We will get into the art in just a minute because I know there are ways uh, that we can start really thinking about how we communicate effectively. But we've got a baby uh, from Berwick on the line. Good morning. Good afternoon Good morning. even. Sorry, we're Good. in a different time zone. How are you? What are your I'm thoughts right. around public speaking? Um, I've been public speaking ever since I was school captain in year 12. Um, and one of the things that my teacher taught me regarding public speaking is something that stood with me for a very long time. It's something very simple, in fact, as well. Um, he pretty much said uh, one of the best ways to overcome the fear of it is to strike a conversation with strangers. Because um, essentially that's where most of the fear lies. It's in uh, individuals not knowing other people and fearing... I guess, scrutiny in one way or another. So I guess that's something that's helped me um, in many ways. And so you've done that over your life. And how have you been received when you've walked up to a stranger and they have, you know, you've started a conversation with them? Uh, well, it certainly helped the fact that we've had a family business and I've sort of, um, you know, been involved in a family business where customers would walk into the shop and the particular business we're in, it's um, the textile industry in particular. 
um, selling Persian carpets. So that's been just phenomenal in the sense that people have had to walk into the shop and me having to strike a conversation with them to hopefully convince them to buy one of these rugs. So that's been helpful as well. But another thing that I've done throughout my university years was catching public transport um, to and from uni um, and just sitting next to someone for about 45 minutes um, most of the time because we're there from Berwick to the city um, and just getting to know that person. So asking their name and just asking a little bit about them, that in itself has really helped me overcome the whole fear of just striking a conversation with a stranger because <laughs> it's really surprising, but it's amazing how much people have in common if they just strike a conversation. It's so That's true. Amazing. Our commonalities are far more um, pr- are present than our differences. Uh, Obadi, thanks so much for joining us this Not afternoon. No problem. Thanks, ladies. Bye. Um, it's true, isn't it? It's kind of that idea, is it, question mark, of becoming speaking to an individual in a group rather than talking to this a mass of people that don't have identity. Is that yeah. one of the tricks? Look, I loved what, what Abadi just said in regards to being curious in, to, about others and asking questions. And, and so, again, that's really shifting the focus from yourself yeah. and saying, hey, I'm here to, to listen. I'm here to step into your world. And great speakers do that. You could have... 50 people in front of you or 2,000 people in front of you. And it's about really looking at these beautiful human beings in front of you and saying, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm no, no better than any of you guys. I'm no less than any of you guys. Let's together have a beautiful experience in whatever you're wanting, whatever that message or that objective is to help those people in your room. And I hear that from what he's saying. I'm going to, I'm sitting here maybe next to someone at the bus and getting curious about this human being in front of me. Because he wasn't talking he was actually asking to listen wasn't yeah, he yeah absolutely i love that the irony where be- it is very zen in the art of isn't it because it's kind of the opposite in some ways than what you think it's not looking at you it's looking out yes. what are some of the other really crucial tips that you've got around if people have to make a speech at a wedding or they've got to go and talk at their child's bar mitzvah or something what are some of the things that we can prepare with yeah well it's really important to know your audience so that so it depends on who your audience are what is your objective being really clear with how you want to serve your audience and being able to practice is is so important and making sure that you don't have a million notes and because your your brain, when you've got too many things to think about, it goes into overwhelm. So you can actually think about what are the three top or five top tips? What are the top five things that I want to really nail or focus on for my audience and focus on those rather than thinking about I've got to get everything word for word perfect. It's about serving who's in front of me, knowing how I can do that. What is What are they looking for from me and being able to deliver that in a way that is succinct and authentic. I think that's really important. I would so much rather see someone that maybe hasn't done public speaking before, but really speak from the heart uh, other than somebody that has 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 done this big script and is just really focused on what's in front of them, what they're reading, rather than who they're really wanting to give the message to. It's great that you said that. I spoke to Tony Wilson really briefly. He was on the Conversation Hour earlier today and he's uh, the founder of Speakola, which is all about the great speeches that have been made and he's got 1,400 or so on his site. Yeah. And he said one of the great things is authenticity. Yes. But do you have to, like it feels hard to get there a little bit when you have got that fear to actually break through and feel confident enough to speak from your heart. Yeah. Well, one, the first thing is is about the belief that you have about you as a speaker. So many people have, I call them limiting beliefs. Some people say stuff like, I, I'm not a great speaker. If I, I, I'm great at speaking with two people, but when it's 100, I can't. Or I'm great at speaking in front of, in a radio studio, but if I have to go on stage and speak, I can't. Or I'm introverted, so I'm not a great speaker. Like all of that is, it's just crap, really. It's all this stuff that we tell ourselves, and that holds us back to begin with because the way that we then communicate to ourselves is we have this internal dialogue that says we're not good enough. And the other thing we do is we measure ourselves compared to others. And so we look at whether it be celebrities or somebody that we think that has more knowledge than us. 
and we measure it and we put maybe put them on a pedestal and say they're better than us. And if you go in to stand up and speak and you're already thinking that, then you're disempowering yourself. So for me, I think that every single person has a story to tell. Everyone has a gift to give. And I think when you tap into that and you notice that, uh, because it doesn't matter if you've, some people have university degrees, some people haven't, but we've all had different life experiences and we all have different gifts. And I think it's about tapping into that, appreciating that and, and allowing that to, 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 you'll be able to serve other people because of that. There's a few Great text coming through. One here is great. I pretend that I'm speaking to my best friend. My audience becomes my best friend. Watch your audience to check that they aren't bored. Try and say something that they will want to know is a, is a tip there as well. Beautiful. A few people have texted through and um, said the classic one around pretending that your audience is naked. Someone oh, texted no. through saying it didn't work. <laughs> no, don't do that. Gen I'd just Z be laughing all the time. Kingsville was like, did not work. Uh, no, because that kind of disengages you from a group of people a bit, doesn't it? That's right. So so it's really, I say the opposite. So there's exercises that I do and it's called accelerated learnings when people come to my courses that you have those, you've experienced the learning. It's not just logical, it's you experience it. And one of those is to really look at these human beings, not naked, <laughs> well dressed. in front of you and look at these beautiful human beings, look into their eyes and be there to serve them I want to from hang a out heart with you. space. I know you'll be looking at me with kind eyes. Very quickly, we've got Gordon from Footscray on the phone. Just really quickly, we're about to uh, head to news, Gordon. But what are your thoughts on speaking publicly? Well, I've had to do it um, a lot in my life, only because I've been called upon um, at weddings and, you know, the people I know and funerals and things like that. What I do is I put down about five things on my palm of my hand just to remind me of what I've uh, got to go through for the person that I'm talking about, you know, or or the society I'm talking about. And I find that very effective. That's great, Gordon. It's kind of like what you're saying. Yes. It's like making sure, thank you so much, Gordon, for your call, making sure that you've got the top things, but that when you do it, it's coming from your heart. Absolutely. You're actually going to be hosting um, a uh, a free event for people yes. to come along and kind of sample and, and investigate public speaking, and especially people like Gordon who have been called upon to do something and they're like, where do I start with this? It might be great for people like that or people who need to do it for their job. Absolutely. And, and in business, I, I have a lot of business owners that I work with and, and public speaking is a fantastic marketing tool for their business. And so I'm really passionate about helping business owners and leaders get out there in the marketplace even more and spread their message to help more people. Um, the place that you will be at is the Amora Hotel. It's in Richmond. It's a free public speaking training and it run, it's running for many hours. Yeah, from 9.30 to 2.30. It will fly, I promise you. Just I'm just flies. so impressed. A free <laughs> event that goes for about, what, how many? Six, seven hours? Yeah, 9.30 Late. to 2.30. Heaps of them. Um, JJ, leave us with uh, one of your biggest tips that you would give um, any public speaker. What's something that we can really take home and, and practice or, or start utilising in our, in our lives? I think one thing, one, one message I want to say is that you are capable of being an amazing speaker right now. You're telling me right now? No, yep. you are. You already are. Okay. Yep. I'm you. <laughs> You're doing it right now. <sighs> and, and it's about being able to say, hey, I've having that why of what is that message. So whether you are saying you, you're going to say a speech at your daughter's wedding, whether you've got a team of people that you want to lead to achieve some great things, whether you've, and I've worked with people that have got amazing, amazing missions. So whatever that is, to be able to serve and go out there and do it. Speaking and life coach, Danelle Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with you after the news.